What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Today, I get to hang out with my friend Jason. Uh, Jason KM4ACK on the YouTubes. Great guy. Always has fun projects. Taking a view of radio in a way that not many people do. And I think it's value added, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you guys are ready for some fun, interesting new projects that Jason's been working on. And uh, yeah, just uh, having a good chat with a good guy. So enjoy the memes. We'll get started real soon. Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Appreciate you coming out. Really do. Thank you so much. It's always a lot of fun making these, and it's, you know, the more people we have watching, asking questions in the chat, we really do appreciate it. Uh, this is going to be Q&A, right? We've got a lot of things to talk about, but we're going to be catching up with you guys as we go along. This is a live stream format, so you guys right here are one of the reasons we do this live. Also, after the show, Jason will be joining us for a little bit of time over at Discord. We'll be doing the Ham Radio Crash Course, Ham's Helping Ham's After Chat. So if you want to get in on that, that's where you ask your questions. We give you answers. Smart people are in the room that can help you out. We have top men standing by. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get started on that, go ahead and take the link in the description to join our Discord server. So a couple of things to hit right off the top. By the way, you know, I'll, I'll hit the big one first and foremost. All of you watching right now, potentially, potentially, could win a Cam4 ACK antenna. We're going to be doing a giveaway at the towards the end of the stream, so make sure you hang around for that. Arthur's been a member for 22 months. Thank you very much at the general level. Thank you. Really do appreciate that. And Mitchell Pilot, thank you for the super chat. We're doing well. I hope you're doing well as well, everybody watching. So make sure you go... Uh, or stick around, I guess, when we do the giveaway, because you got to be here to win, and yeah, we'll figure that out. All right, hamtactical.com, the merch store for the <laughs> Hammer Deal Crash Course and the Hammer Deal Crash Course podcast, ran by my wife, and that's the best place to get the coolest merch in amateur radio. Uh, if you are a fan of the pod, you can get things like the 1X crew for discerning podcast listeners. You always listen at 1X speed. We, uh, I will be the D, or sorry, the MC, not the DC, the MC for the International DX Convention, seventy fifth International, seventy. Wow, really? That's a big, that's a big year, milestone year. Uh, this year, April twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth in Visalia, California. This is a really big ham fest when it comes to DX. We're talking about very specific niche. We're talking about long distance communications over HF, people going out to remote islands, uninhabited places, setting up radio, making contact. So you get experts all across the board with information that I simply don't have. So I'm going there to learn as much as you all. And I'm honored to be asked to be the MC. So check it out. Link is in the description. If not, I'll drop it right now in the chat. The cool thing about this show is over $50,000 in giveaways. That is an insane number. It's one of the, the highest level of giveaways in a ham fest. And it's, yeah, I, I don't think there's many that touch them. So check that out. Uh, also, we're, we're probably about the time where we're going to start closing the applications, the RSVPs for the Silverwood Lake camp out. We have a really a good number of people that are coming out to this event. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the link is in the description for that. April 26th and 28th, the last weekend or the weekend before the last in April in Silverwood, California. So if you can get out there, come on and join us. Uh, I'm not sure if we set the prices yet, but it includes a couple of meals that Leia will cook. And let's see, well, uh, it also covers a custom t-shirt that you can only get if you come to the event. It's kind of the special thing we do. Okay, okay. KM4ACK, my friend Jason. J Jason is, uh, you know, the guy who's done the build a pie script, a, a big Linux, Linux, Linux. You know, it's if you're if you're a native uh, Linux speaker, you're you're a little bit Linux. Uh, he's uh, very big into Linux and helps break this all down so you can get started with amateur radio. Not just get started, but have deeper understanding and and really be prepared. I like Jason's approach to amateur radio because it's not that like mill calm you know preparedness almost what i've jokingly referred to as radio larping a little bit this is very practical 
personal preparedness for radio communications, being off grid, wherever you go, and then making it functional and reliable. That's some of the things that Jason does. So you can take a look here. He's, he's looking at the new Digi Rig interface. Uh, the ultimate field guide for ham radio. I've got one of these, but Jason got the scoop on me for that one. To, like, taking a look at the D75. He's been deep diving that for a little while. His link is in the video description, and I will drop it now for everybody in the chat. Do show some love and uh, go subscribe to Jason. All right. Uh, what else? I think we got a couple other things we'll hit after we say a big hello to Jason. How's it going, man? Hey, man. How are you guys? Oh, good. And thanks for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. So what's been going on with you? It's It's been a while since you've been on the live stream. I, I think every time I see you, it's like we're at a ham fest. So it's Orlando or and we're running around like crazy. So how you been? What's been going on? Doing good. I'm going to steal the Linish. I, if you're a native <laughs> Linux speaker, you're a little bit Linish. Yeah, I like it. Or maybe you're just getting in, so you're Linish. You're not full Linux. You're Linish. You know, I like it. Either either way, I'm going to definitely hijack that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I don't know. All kinds of different projects floating across the desk. That D75 has had me sidetracked for the last month, probably. Uh, really delving into that, getting everything working with Linux. Uh, GPS drove me nuts. That turned out to be user error. Uh -huh. um, that new DigiRig prototype sound card, I've been playing with it for the last week. Uh, that's That's been a lot of fun. It's been challenging. Um, and then we're working on something for the at our local club that might be interesting to some of the viewers out there. Mm -hmm. um, something we're calling the Ham Radio Obstacle Course, or at least that's the name so far. Uh, but the idea is to take new hams, and we've got 18 of them right now in the tech class. And when they come out, we want to give them kind of a set of challenges. So it'll it'll challenge them just to maybe what they don't know, but also give us opportunities to mentor and coach them through this. Um, and it's going to be what may seem like a simple task to me and you, but it may be a bit more complicated for them. They may not, may not even understand why we're doing some things, um, but maybe have them program a simplex frequency from the front panel of the radio. Um, after they've gotten that, maybe have them program a tone uh, for that same simplex frequency and just kind of go down this rabbit hole. And I'm kind of interested if the viewers have any ideas of things, uh, you know, kind of little challenges we could present to new hams. Um, we don't want to we don't want to do anything crazy like require an APRS radio to send a message or something like that. We're talking, you know, brand new basic skills and try to help coach them through that. And this is something you're doing with the local club, so you get that kind of hands-on feel so that, you know, you're you're there for the live tutelage, right? Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. This wasn't my idea. I can't take credit for it, but uh, when when one of the club members mentioned this to me, uh, I was definitely on board because this is a, a way to almost gamify ham radio. Yeah, I, I, we've got a couple of good ones. Uh, Jody's the first one. Challenge one, buy rigs without the spouse getting too angry. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> challenge two from this HD, ADHD life is survive an HOA meeting. I guess survive without going absolutely <laughs> insane uh, at some of their proposed requirements upon you. But uh, yeah, I, I love this idea. And the fact that you, I mean, is it a pretty large club? How many people about do you have? Uh, we've got a little over 100 members. What's the um, turnouts like on your meetings? Yeah, uh, usually around thirty to forty people. Pretty good. That's great. I think. Yeah. So, yeah, with 30 so people, and we you can do a lot. Yeah, we don't want to exclude anybody. I mean, this is going to be open for everyone. So maybe you just got a brand new HT and you want to come out and see how well you've figured things out on it. Um, you know, we want to open it up to everybody and just make it a fun event um, where you can learn something and you know, there's people around you that can coach you through things that you might not know. Yeah, what's the uh, and I'm not a sports guy, but isn't there like a, a challenge that they put draftees through? It's like the combine or something like that. You could come up with a yes. fancy name for, you know, the the you know the radio radio challenge or you know, of course it's an obstacle course, but give it some kind of crazy name and then then you could run <laughs> through it multiple times with different radios, like you know, because that's basically what this is. It's it's kind of your aptitude for any particular radio. So you could almost have like a VHF UHF version of this, an HF version, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This guy's almost the limit, right? 
Yeah, we've already gotten a whole list of challenges for a digital portion, but we want to start basic where anybody, because as soon as you mention digital, you're going to exclude half the club. Sure. Um, and, and we want to include everyone, not exclude anyone. So that's uh, why we're starting with kind of this basic one. One other idea that we stole from some old game show, I can't remember which one it was, uh, where you could ask the audience, uh, ask the coach, or ask the internet. Oh yeah, like uh, uh, <laughs> who wants to be a millionaire, right? Used to be able Maybe to that phone was a it. friend, I, 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 and you could do the fifty-fifty. Yeah, fifty, that's pull it. The I couldn't audience. remember which. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. remember which game show that came from, but we're actually going to throw some lifelines in there for them too. I like it. Somebody said the Ham Radio Spartan Race. That's from Ray. That's that's not bad. It's a Ham Radio Spartan Race. So what have been your thoughts of the D74? Right now, it's kind of been my daily driver. I have it here in the shack. Have you, have you been loving it? Pros, cons? What would you say? It is a fantastic radio. I've carried it pretty much exclusively for the last uh, three weeks, maybe four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, the battery life. The battery life is the only thing that I'm just not crazy about. I actually yep. did a video and put that out comparing it to the FT5 and kind of breaking it down because of the different uh, battery sizes. Um, and, the, and that's my only gripe. The good news is, is you can t charge it off of 12 volts. I know you're a big, you know, off-grid power kind of guy too. So that that's not a big deal, I think. Um, but it, it is it is important to keep that in mind because it's like it's like the graphing calculator of ham radios. It does all right. the things, and if you run all the things, and it's going to deplete the battery faster. And then yep. just natively, the battery's not that really that big to begin with. Um, so yeah, no, I, I'm in the same boat with you. K9 JPP asks, uh, can I take this idea to my own club? The idea of the. Uh, Absolutely. No, that Jason would be awesome. trademarked it. He trademarked it immediately. <laughs> you have to pay him a pittance every time you ever use it. No, of course not. You pay in Belfangs. That's it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I like it. I like it. Uh, so tell me about the uh, the prototype board before we get into some of these other questions. You, you've been, you, you have a video up. Digi Rig is working on a prototype and maybe tell people a little bit about it because I, I think some of people are probably new to it. Yeah, let's see if we can pull up maybe – where'd the mouse go? All right, there it oh, is. Oh, look at uh, that. I mean, that thing is super it's tiny. tiny. Um, in fact, there's uh, AirPods case to kind of compare the size of that thing. Yep. So it is super small. Um, it, it's going to be what Dennis is calling the DigiRig Lite, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's not as full-featured, but it's not going to replace the original DigiRig either. Um, this will not have serial control uh, built into it. Uh, it'll plug straight into the computer, at least the prototype does. Now, he might change something on this design. These are sure. early prototypes. Yeah. Um, and then PTT is handled through a CM108 chip. Uh, right, but it, it's passed through the, the aux cable or however you wire it, right? Yes. So yes. It, this is a one... So th think of this, everybody listening... Um, if you're like a, an HT user and you've ever wanted to do Packet or possibly Vara FM, we're probably going to talk about that in a little bit, uh, and you needed a capability to have audio in and out and then also PTT, this would let you do it. So is it is it tip ring ring sleeve for the plug? Yes. Or is it, okay, so it's the, yes. four, it's the four pin. Oh, and one really cool thing Dennis is working hard to do is keep this compatible with the existing DigiRig cables. Yes. Yeah, that's what he told me uh, so, on email. He's like, yeah, you could use your own cables with this. So you lose cat control for some of you HF users. That may be a deal breaker, but it's really not that bad. You just kind of tune the frequency up and then you're good to go. Uh, but for the VHF, UHF crowd, this is exactly what we needed because very few of the VHF, UHF radios have cat control anyway, right? Well, and for specific projects like my APRS DigiPeter, the portable version, mm -hmm. this is absolutely fabulous. This cuts out an entire cable and shrinks the package over half. Oh, wait. Say that again? Okay. I, I was I was pulling up my questions. Uh, That's okay. So an APRS DigiPeter kit, uh, my portable one that I've built, yeah. this is going to be the replacement board for it because I don't need cat control. It stays on 144.390. Right. Um, and it eliminates one of the cables that I have to deal with, plus it shrinks the overall package size by half. Okay. So it's I got gotcha. you. It's yeah. a perfect fit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in, in your radio hobby and your space of what you enjoy doing, what are your primary kind of modes and interests that kind of keep you coming back for more? What have you been doing? <sighs> digital. Anything digital that I can get my hands on and play with. Primarily, um, 
APRS, much mm -hmm. to the dismay of Mike KMRD. Well, he he likes <laughs> you doing it, right? Because he knows you're a power user. That's getting you're you're ringing out every little bit of that of that technology. But for him, in the middle of uh, BFE Huntsville, Texas, he he doesn't have much value in it. He says. <laughs> But yeah, so APRS, WinLink, of course, uh, JSA call still a little bit, not as much as I once was into it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've kind of been going uh, down the rabbit hole of FL Digi again. Um, oh. We've got a we've got a new DigiNet uh, that the one of the club members is running, uh, where we're literally leaving stations on twenty four hours a day uh, to be able to send messages back and forth. And uh, kind of get people introduced to some digital modes. Which modes and radios are you using on FL Digi? Because there's so many. What are you using primarily? Uh, yeah, we're using MT63 2KL. Oh, okay. Uh, we're running it through. We're running it through a repeater, so you can literally use an HT and, and participate. I've never used that mode. So is it primarily text, kind of like PSK31 type of thing, or what are you doing with that? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, primarily text, just a lot more throughput. Now, I, it sounds like you have a bunch of like-minded people on your repeater, too, because I could imagine some of my local joints, if I started keying up with digital modes, they'd, they'd scream me off the uh, the repeater. <laughs> so how, how's that been working for you? It's good. Uh, that, uh, that repeater is, repeater owner is in our club. We approached him before we ever started. It was kind of an underutilized repeater, oh, okay. and he was like, go for it. Anybody that wants to use it for anything, have at it. So okay. once so, we got his blessing, we started running it. Yeah, you got some buy-in there. I, I remember, who was I talking to? It was uh, Ham Radio Made Easy. They use Rattle, uh, Rattlegram through a repeater. Um, mm -hmm. I guess you could do anything, right? You could do SSTV through a repeater. I, I, I know some guys that have done that before, too. So that's that's really cool. So what's the use yeah. case of this? You'd like send each other messages or just have like a net or what? what's the idea? It's honestly become a group of friends that just kind of hang out. Um, you know, okay. I, there's a message, might be a message of, hey, we're getting together for breakfast in the morning. If you can come, great. If you can't, we get it. Um, so it might be that. Um, I don't know. I've had, after people watch some of the videos, we've had a couple of people from farther out, you know, that we wouldn't have expected to jump in there a time or two. Um, so it, it's been a lot of fun, uh, a lot of experimentation, being able to pass actual files back and forth using FL amp. Um, so I what's FL amp? Together... I haven't used that either. See, this is all. I guess this is new old stuff, or is this actually new modes? <laughs> it, it, no, it's new old stuff or okay. old new stuff. However you want to look at it, uh, FL amp is a way to transfer a binary file back and forth. So each week I kind of put together a little news brief with a bit of training. Uh, in a text document, and then we send that out. I'll transmit that from here using FL AMP. Um, it's run with a checksum, so if you miss, it'll it'll break it up into blocks. Sure. So let's say there's 20 blocks. You get all those blocks except for 12 and 14. I can actually retransmit just blocks 12 and 14 so that oh. you've got a complete fail on it. Is that something done um, in FL Digi, or do you need special software for that? No, that's FL... Well... FL AMP is an add-on to FL Digi, but it's all part of the FL Digi suite. So you is that it like an upgrade that you have to add to it, or is it something that's a part yeah, of you'll have to, a, a mode? You're going to have to download it separately, um, but it attaches right to FL Digi. So the two of them will sync up almost out of the box. So I, I like that because that's part of the issue that we ran into with JSA Call. JSA Call... Uh, you know, we should probably hit on that in a second here, but uh, really like the app. The, the, one of the things that worries us is that uh, the developers kind of gone AWOL a little bit, which is, you know, fine. People got life and all that stuff, but it's not really a you can't really move data with it. And we've we've considered VAR AC, which is another or VAR, you yeah, know, VAR AC, which is a good kind of person to person data transmitting type of thing. But if you wanted that kind of almost micro blog capability in an off grid sense, that sounds like exactly what we would need to use. And then by breaking it up and then having, you know, it's not a, a 100 percent fail zero or one binary case it's multiple points at which you could just re-get that package and then you're, you've got the whole file for instance i really like that uh, here's another cool little feature of fl amp uh let's say i broadcast that out 
uh, you receive it, but somebody else wasn't on the air or maybe they just missed a portion of it, mm -hmm. you can actually relay that to them. So it works great for Simplex as well. So I'm pulling up FL Amp right now. We, we'll probably look into this in the after chat, guys, because this is this is uh, I'm doing this. This is no question. And uh, so running this, and you know, you 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 always have such good kind of off grid ideas for a lot of stuff. Are you are you running this off of small computers, laptops? What are you doing in the shack and then in the field? The Jankopotamus. Is it really? Has that become? I am. Your... I am still running that laptop. Right there. That's the Jankopotamus. I'm, I'm amazed because you were you were so diehard Raspberry Pi, and, and there's no hate on the Raspberry Pi except you know things change a little bit. <laughs> so what what did it for you? Because I, I don't think Linux <laughs> ports directly over to the Jankopotamus, right? How did you deal with those hurdles? No, it does. Uh, I, I didn't need. I think I I think I opened it up long enough for Windows to tell me to stand by. It was updating. I took a screenshot and then I hit power off. Okay. Um, I rebooted with a USB thumb drive that had Linux, uh, a Linux ISO image on it, uh -huh. and said install. Uh, as soon as it booted up, I said install. It said, "Do you want to keep Windows?" And I said, "Absolutely not." What uh, um, What version of Linux are you using with distro? Linux Mint, Mint. Uh, and I think I'm still running twenty one point three. So I think I'm going to do this. I've got a Jankopotamus sitting around that's not um, – I, I, I fell into the – did you hear about the gateways? The, the, the gateway makes a Jankopotamus that's a little bit better, better keyboard, better trackpad. Do you have – not the not the touchscreen one. Not the touchscreen one. Is that the touchscreen okay. one? Yes, that's so the touchscreen. It, it's basically the same. It's identical to the Jankopotamus um, without the touchscreen. So it, it has okay. the better keyboard, the better trackpad, no touchscreen. Um, but I'm going to do this. So Linux Mint. I love it. Okay. Because I think we're going to touch one, on some Linux things in a little bit here. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. One thing you're going to run into, uh, well, two things. A, the sound will never work if you run Linux. So you've got to run an external sound card, which is fine for radio. You just can't watch YouTube videos on it. The second thing, Wi-Fi won't work out of the box. Uh, but I did a video on how to get the Wi-Fi driver, driver installed. So that is a that is something that doesn't work. Is that uh, the audio? Yes. It doesn't acknowledge the audio card. It's something weird with the Jankopotamus because I know when Mike uh, when Tank messed up Mike's Jankopotamus and Mike reinstalled Windows, he lost his audio as well. Interesting. So if you're so if you're not running the Windows version that came installed, you're going to lose audio. Oh, I should probably burn a, a backup of whatever I've got and save that off to you uh, can you can save drive. it as a dual boot no I, I like to go I hate I hate dual booting I hate I hate splitting up my hard drive <laughs> space I'd rather go all one or a, or nothing kind of thing yeah that goes yeah. back to my old uh Mac days when we had to use parallel and boot camp and all that stuff I, I'd rather go whole hog or nothing all at in. all because you, yep. you end up with this weird one foot over one fence and another foot over the other fence and also murdering your hard drive by splitting it in half. It's it's never really a fun thing. So no, I, I hear you. So uh, to date, you know, going into this a little bit further with some of the new radios that have been coming out and, and, you know, add what you've been experimenting with and kind of what your favorites are. What is your kind of like go bag, go vehicle type radios that you've been uh, fielding recently? <sighs> So I committed to something that I'll end up doing a video on somewhere in November or December. I have committed to, and this was a challenge for myself. I wanted to carry an HT every single day of the year. Oh, I love uh, it. Whether I'm, whether I'm at home or whether I'm out and about, I've got one with me. Um, so I've gone through, I, I'm, I'm more or less rotating, although I haven't over the last few weeks. But uh, the Red of Us RA89, uh, the Yezu FT5, of course, the Kenwood D75, um, Yezu's FT70, uh, and then a Yezu FT60. Okay. So I'm just kind of rotating through those to kind of, I mean, that's from a low-end radio like the Red of Asari 89 all the way up to, you know, top of the line Kenwood. So I, I, I'm new to this. Is this just a simple analog dual bander? This uh... Simple analog dual band. It's... Uh, IP something or another, you can drown it in a bucket of water and it will survive. Is this uh, is this time where yeah okay I gotcha right on. You um, USB C rechargeable. Oh, oh cool. And the and the battery will last for two days sitting on my desk monitoring. 
So are you doing all the things? So I'm assuming all the all the radios you mentioned, um, you do all the things with it. So APRS, all that stuff, the interfacing with the digi rig, all that same concept, right? The only thing I really haven't dug into the uh, RA89 with digital, so I've primarily just used it for voice. Everything else, yes, I've I've run one way or the other with all the digital modes. Okay, very good. As far as uh, in your, because I know you got a Jeep, and what what's your primary kind of radio for that? Uh, I'm running an FTM 400 in the Jeep uh, and an 857 for the HF radio, and then in the truck I run the FTM 500. Oh, that's right, because you do. That's right, you did get a sweet deal on that truck. I've seen it now a couple of times. Good, good stuff. Uh, maybe talk about that too. So, four fifty versus five hundred. You, you, oh, well, you, you made a video on that for anybody who didn't see it. You should go check out Jason's channel. Um, it's it's kind of funny because there there are people that you talk with in amateur radio that they really do specific things, and the four fifty for somebody like like Jason and and a little bit myself that really likes APRS the four. 450 is really good. Um, 400. The, sorry, 400. 450 is the HF radio. Um, but the 500 came out, and they decided to go a different way, right? What was the deal there? You know, at first, I want to say it's a fabulous mm -hmm. radio for the way 90% of the people yep. are going to use it. 90% yep. of the people are going to turn on APRS beaconing. That's the last thing they'll do with APRS, and they'll talk on the radio. And if you do that, it's a beautiful radio. Yezu just completely trashed the APRS user interface all the way around. It's just janky. Um, it, for somebody like me, it's annoying. I have come up with a workaround for that, though, that I'll be doing a video sometime in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, but that's the part that really annoyed me with the radio. It's the only part of it that I don't like, but I use APRS quite a bit, and I, I just don't like their choices. Yeah, I'm I'm in the exact same boat. I I actually really like it from a simplex and repeater user. I think that's really nice. Uh, their controls, having the speaker on the head, all that stuff is like top top choices. It's like universal in that sense. It's got a speaker output yes. on the head unit, but also you could attach an external speaker. Uh, you could have the mic on the speaker head versus the body. Like all these different options they had covered, which is really really nice. But yesu has got this thing where it's like they, they don't want to have a consistent UI that they carry across all their radios. It changes almost every time you pick up a new Yesu. And that's the only downside, really, that I have with Yesu. And it's something that I feel like has only happened in the last like five or six years. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I have no real complaints about it, but other than that APRS stuff, because that was a little bit frustrating. Yeah. So, okay. Um, I I oh. like oh, go ahead go ahead. Can we jump back for a second to the yes. Raspberry Pi? Yes, please. I would love to talk about the Raspberry Pi. So, what kind of drove me away from the Pi um to to a certain extent was uh the COVID-19. Oh, it got, part all the Raspberry Pis got COVID. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh you know, they were unavailable for 2 years. Mhm. Mm um I had to figure out something, and right about that time is when the Jankopotamus came out, and I just went ahead and picked up a couple of those for 60 bucks. I, you know, when I did power draw test and the fact that it, you could charge it off of 12 volts, yep. it was oh. faster than the Raspberry Pi. I mean, just all the way around, it was a better solution. Yeah. Um, so I kind of migrated towards that and pretty much now I'm using Raspberry Pis for one-off applications. So I've still got a Pi running my DigiPeter here in the shack. I've got one running the Winlink gateway. Mm -hmm. Uh, my portable DigiPeter is on a Pi Zero. Okay. So for those applications, I'm still, you know, I'm still using them. I just don't daily drive them for a field computer the way I once did. Yeah, I, I I'm with you completely in the sense that they're fantastic shack tools. They they consider you know they consistently are useful for lots of little you know indiscriminate needs, but I don't really like them for field work because it's just not that robust, reliable sense wise to me. And I've had SD cards fail, and if it fails in the shack, it's not a big deal. But if it fails out in the field, it's like okay, so now am I carrying backup SD cards, and I got to have backups of backups and all that stuff. Um, 
the jank opponents, which, which, by the way, isn't that much more reliable, which is the funny part about all that. <laughs> but the peripherals are all done. You're done. Like, you get it all set. You're all set to go. For everybody that's like, what the heck is a jank um, Really fast. It's the Evolve 3 Maestro. It's an 11-inch laptop. It's running a Celeron processor, so it's not fast at all. If you're like Jason and you run Linux, then you got no problems. You just switch over to Linux and you're good. For you Windows users, which I'm one of them, if you debloat it, yes, debloating is where you remove all that extra junk. <laughs> it actually is pretty fast. And the big part about this, one of the reasons why this kind of kind of grabbed onto the amateur radio community, it runs off of 12 volts. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere with a solar setup and a battery, you can keep this going along with all your radios and stuff. When we first got turned on to this, this thing was 50 bucks. Walk out of the door at Micro Center. Now it's $80. So the, the costs have come up because of popularity, but it's 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 pretty good. It's pretty good from my point of view. Hey, even if you buy it on Amazon for 125 bucks, I still think it's a winner. I don't even know how they can produce it for $50 <laughs> retail, let alone 80, possibly even 120. So uh, yeah. so, so they're making money somehow. I, I don't know how the heck they're doing it, but yeah. Uh, regarding, well, let's see, we got a couple of questions. Uh, oh, that's a, that's a really good one. So what's the, what's the future of build a pie then with some of your interests changing? What are you doing there? Build a pie is no more. It's oh, still out go. there, but it is not being, uh, developed at all. However, seven, three Linux is out now. It's been out for two years. Uh, seven, three Linux will still support the raspberry Pi. Just the way it always, uh, just the way Buildify always did. The catch is 73 Linux will also support x86 machines like this laptop. Oh, okay. So, so you, do, it'll do, do both. Are, are you, you're not really losing anything if you're not producing updates other than new software potentially being latched into it because you still have the capability to update. The software that's you can, connected. You all you need to do is move over to 7.3 Linux. You don't have to uninstall Buildify. You don't have to do anything. Just load 7.3 Linux on top of your Buildify, run an update, and you'll be back in business. So what with is the latest? Linux? Because 7.3 Linux is Buildify's replacement. And that's yours? Or yes. Well, oh, I didn't know this. Okay. So I, I have not yes. I've not dabbled in this whole world. <laughs> so catch me up. What are we doing here? What are we going? So once I moved over and started playing with uh, the laptop, it runs an x86 processor. A lot of things are different in it versus Got the Buildapi's ARM processor. So I started writing basically Buildapi for the x86 machine, but it didn't make sense to call it Buildapi anymore. So, so I've got I renamed your it to seven three Linux. I'll drop the I'll drop the link here. Yep. Uh, go to go to repositories up at the top, and you'll see seven three Linux. Mm, I'm sorry. Where where am I going? What's repository oh, at the top? No, you're in it. Yeah, I think so. Okay, um, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you'd already clicked into that repository. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, for anybody that GitHub sometimes not approachable from uh from a normie standpoint, and sometimes I find myself getting stuck using it. But <laughs> is there like a releases area or or an area people should go if they want the latest greatest or whatever they need to load? If you'll scroll down the page right there, there's an install section. Okay. Right there. Oh, That's there it is. literally one line of code that you need to copy and paste into the terminal, and you will be off to the races. So that's kind of exactly what you had done with uh, Build a Pi. So sa same concept. Yes. Um, you do have. Yes. Do you have to have Linux running? So you have to run Linux Mint, and then you run the Git clone call on top of that, right? Correct. You've got to have Mint installed first, okay. uh, or or um, Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, and then you can run that same command. Doesn't matter which box you're running. It will figure out if you're on an ARM processor or an x86. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I will become uh, very aware of this here shortly because I'm going to load Linux Mint and I'm going <laughs> to move over to this. So I'm, I'm glad this is, it, it's not that, well, build a pie stopped, but it's it's still living on in the form of, of this yeah. iteration. So that's great. That's great. Right. So I think I cut you off a little bit. Did we cover uh, new radios or new things that you're excited about? Yeah, pretty much. Um, oh, the Lily Go. Let's see. Will that focus? Maybe. I tell you what. Let's do it on the overhead camera. There you go. This is this is something that I've gotten that I have not played with yet. This came in uh, sometime back in January, and then I left for vacation and was gone the majority of February. Um, 
but this is actually a tiny little HT that runs on like a 18650 battery. Oh, cool. That almost looks but like a cool... T-Deck. Yes, very similar. But mm -hmm. the cool thing about this is you can flash new firmware on it and make this a full APRS uh, radio. So oh. you can make it a Digipeter. You can make it an eye gate. Um, and that's what I want to dive into next is trying to figure that thing out and get it to working. Interesting. Uh, so you, you haven't dipped into this yet, but um, it, it, I think somebody just yelled M17 will run on this, which is kind of cool. Uh, it, it may do it. Yeah. What what is what is the APRS flash that you'd put on this? Uh, Josh, you put me on the spot. I'd have to go no, back yeah, it's, and it's find fine. the. Yeah, I, I'd, it's I'd have to new. dig through the link. Yeah, yeah no, it, it's something new when, that you're you're working on. So yeah, I, I mean you'll when, you'll have a video on it, of course, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So, but I I just want to take that when I saw that APRS firmware, I'm like, that is pretty cool. I think that device was like eighty bucks, seventy bucks, something. Oh, um, cool. Of course, it takes about six or eight weeks to get it. And uh, oh then gosh. hopefully I can get the <laughs> hopefully I can get that APRS firmware flashed up. I've got a idea for a project in mind with that. So uh, tell me about the delays. I'm going to hit upon something that I bought that I've been waiting for <laughs> since September. Uh, 73 Linux question is: Will it run on Ubuntu? Should because Ubuntu should. is Debian based, so mm -hmm. it it should run just like uh, just like it does on Mint. So uh, the architecture shouldn't matter. I feel like that. It's based off the the operating system is going to handle all that for you. What is the uh, why does it have to be eighty six architecture for Linux seventy or seventy three Linux to run? Oh, it doesn't have to be x eighty six architecture. Okay. okay. Uh, because it'll it'll run on the ARM processor of the Raspberry Pi. Okay. So it's not that. Okay, so build a pie isn't it's it's gone in name only almost because it's living yes. on in the form of seventy three Linux, which covers all these other platforms as well. So everybody Correct. just needs to migrate over is more the statement than, okay. We're not yes. in mourning, if you will, of, of build a pie. No. Just, it has a new life. It's been reborn. Okay. I, I like we it. Did, okay. It just didn't make sense to keep calling it build a pie when we're running it on, you know, things other than a raspberry Pi now, but no, yeah. it will run on both. Got it. Okay. So here's, here's one that, you know, Jason and I were talking before we, we, we went live here in, uh, in chat and whatever. We talk a lot on, X and uh, <laughs> Twitter, as I like to refer to it, uh, but we, we DM back and forth. And one of the things I, I think, and, and you kind of hit upon it, is digital modes are kind of difficult for not even new hams, all hams, to get started in. And when I say digital, for everybody listening, I mean it in the broad sense of like APRS, right? Not just digital voice like D-Star or Yesu System Fusion, that kind of stuff. Uh, but then also now, you know, um, different digital modes that, that Jason already talked about out of the FL Digi platform. So if someone wanted to get started getting into digital modes, or, or is there a specific radio slash computing device that you might recommend? And I guess give me the, the cheap version and then the more expensive version. Okay, I'm going to shock everybody when I say this. All right, here we Oh, shock. I like it. All right. If you're a Windows user, stick with Windows. Don't wow. dive off. Don't dive off into trying to learn Linux and learn digital modes at the exact same time. I can see it, that, yeah. it, it Just tackle one problem at a time. Uh, radios, you know, it depends. I mean, what's your budget? Yeah, yeah the, the the fundamental question we always ask. So, like, let's, let's – uh, yeah. can you do it for under 600 bucks? Yeah, you can use the – if you want to do HF, you could pick up something like the uh, Yesu 891 and a DigiRig sound card. Uh, you'd be mm -hmm. close to that $600 mark. And then just um, use like a used laptop, old laptop, that kind of thing. Because yeah, you don't need high yeah, power. Whatever laptop you've already – no, whatever laptop you've already got going, run it for the time being. And then if you get into it and you like it, you want to dabble with Linux, then you know pick up a inexpensive laptop and load Linux onto it. Start playing with it as well. So, have you ever played around with the True SDX for digital modes? No, I have not. I need to pick one of those up. Yeah, somebody was in the chat saying, "Can you do it for under a hundred? Under a hundred is probably pretty difficult. You're pretty much going to be using a VHF UHF handheld for that, which counts." Totally counts. It's just different ranges, but the True SDX, even the pre-built ones, at like one hundred and thirty bucks, um, it has a USB interface, so you can do cat control over it. 
that might be the way to go for a lot of folks is get yourself a true SDX. Not an outstanding performer by any regards. It's it's not a it's not a you know performing radio, but it does all the things and also leverages that uh, USB control, which is which is nice. What what, what about like a uh, more expensive setup? I guess so. Eight ninety one still a great call. I think either way. But what would you what would you get in that case? My daily driver is the Icom seven hundred five. Okay. Um, okay. All, all all bands, all modes. GPS is built in, sound cards built in, one cable from the radio to the computer, and you're done. Um, I don't know. I've been I've been really daily driving that one for well over a year now. Uh, that was definitely my favorite radio of 2023. Yeah, me too. And um, you know, quick, have you have you done the USB C upgrade on that? No, I can't catch the thing in stock because of your video. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that they had a hard time keeping it in stock. Uh, that's a pretty sweet deal. Is is that little setup that makes that solves some problems, right? It it because you get better cables, shielded, etc. Um, without a lot of issues there. So yeah, I, I like that. Uh, what else? Anything else you can add to that? What about uh, computers? I mean, you're fine with the the Jankopotamus or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, if you're just getting into it, just wanting to dip your toe into the water. Use what you've already got. I wouldn't invest a lot of money until you figure out that that's definitely what you want to play with. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you just want to learn more about APRS, uh, you could literally just pick up a Raspberry Pi and start playing with it. You can load all of the software pretty much onto a Raspberry Pi. There's some limitations, um, but you could start playing with FL Digi on a Raspberry Pi if you wanted to go the Linux route. Mm. But if you've got a Windows laptop, uh, then go ahead and just load FL Digi onto it. Yeah. Uh, have you played around with the QDX from QRP Labs? No. So no, there's several little radios I would like to play with that I haven't had opportunity to. I, I bought a D75. My funds are gone. I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? You could have bought you could have bought multiple True SDXs and a couple of QDXs for the price of one uh, D75. Uh, really fast. I, I'm actually running the QDX here on my in my home shack, uh, and I'm connected to an Android tablet using FT8CN. Um, QDX is great. The problem with the QDX and uh, is that it's an FSK only transmitting radio. So it's it's fairly limited to JSA call, FT8, that kind of stuff. The true SDX is a little bit more uh, forgiving in that space, but QDX is pretty cool. It's pretty cool other than that. So it's kind of limited. Uh, yeah. Another question here from James Hannibal. Question, has Smart Jason tried running digital modes directly on Linux running on the 6100? <laughs> Shagu X6100. No, nope, he's going to have to ask T.O. about that one. Uh, yeah. T.O. was the one that did the deep dive into that. Yeah, that was definitely something he got passion over. For me, um, when I used the 6100 and they started <laughs> dipping into Linux... I, I saw the the value in it, but also it, the the kind of novelty of it because it, it's not a great screen and it's it's not a fantastic performing radio. It does the radio things fine, but I don't know that I'd want to run Linux natively on that radio and that computing body. That seems like a nightmare. Well, no, I I think it was already running Linux under the hood. Mm -hmm. But I think it when is. you start adding, I think when you start trying to add software into that, it's yeah. asking probably a little bit much of the processor. Oh, that, that's what I meant is they figured out how to get admin control basically of it and start making changes to it. And so, yeah, it will run all that stuff, but uh, performance frustration levels might start to, to get a little <laughs> bit higher. Uh, I'm very much the let's not have 18 different dongles and connecty bits that I can forget. Um, so making things, you know, into one box would be ideal, but I don't know that it's up to the heavy lifting of that. So yeah, that's a, uh, that's my big thing. Uh, I will hey, mention, I've, yeah. Uh, just before I forget it, if mm -hmm. anybody does have a D75 or a D74 and they're a Linux user, I did uh, push out a new little app today called D75 Connect. Oh, okay. It will just help help you out in getting that uh, radio connected over Bluetooth to Linux uh, Linux Mint machine. So I, I have links for all this stuff. These are, are new links that are not in the show notes, so I'll make sure we update that, but I just dropped it in the chat. So that, that's a big one, too, because 
you said you had a little bit of a, a heartburn on getting the T75 <laughs> connected uh, to Linux. What was the problems you were finding? So, so the TNC worked fine. I could get in with uh, get the APRS data into Yak. I could make Winlink connections. The Bluetooth was the one that drove me nuts. Um, I'd never owned the Kenwood HD before D74, D72, none of those. So I was brand new to this. Uh, the basics of connecting it over Bluetooth to Linux were not foreign to me, so I understood that portion. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know is you need to turn off the TNC in order to get the GPS data into Linux. Oh. And a okay. couple of, oh, oh, over Bluetooth. Now, if you do it with a cable, this, this all changes. But over Bluetooth, you can only get one or the other. You either get the TNC data or you get the GPS data. You can't get both. And I kept, or I didn't realize you needed to cut off that TNC to get the GPS data. Oh, so wow. it worked a couple of times and then it wouldn't work for two days and I couldn't figure out why. And then all of a sudden it starts working again. Well, it was just, I turned the TNC off, but wasn't making the correlation. Okay. So it was this phantom problem I was chasing and it just took me a while to figure out user error. Uh, right. If you turn the TNC off, it, it works fine. Interesting. And oddly enough, when it comes to the D75, I've found that the connection over Bluetooth into Windows is kind of my preferred method instead of using a cable. But in, mm -hmm. in your case, you found that the cabled version was much easier and the Bluetooth led to more headaches on Linux. So that, that's interesting. It, it, in the beginning. Uh, right. Now it works flawlessly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, got a super hey, chat. No, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say really fast from Ken. Great show as usual. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you, Ken. Appreciate that. And uh, somebody asked where the after show is. Uh, it is on our Discord. So you just take the link in the show notes to the Discord, join there, and scroll down to hashtag live stream, hashtag live stream after chat. One is the text chat, and the second one is the voice chat. So you can join us and talk and be able to ask your questions directly. Go ahead, Jason. What were you going to say? So I was curious because I know you have done Bluetooth connections uh, using Windows. Mm -hmm. Can In Windows, can you get the GPS data and the TNC data at the same time? One or the other. Okay, so yeah. it's the same. Yeah, I, right. I've, I've found that you have, to, um, you have to put it into the data mode. It can't be on APRS. Okay. So you know how you can, That's you can probably do the, TNC? Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. So we're probably saying the same thing. I um what I would do is there is a APRS software. It's pretty old for uh, Windows that I really like. And I was having this issue where it wasn't pulling the GPS information. So my laptop didn't know physically where I was at. And so I was getting all these beacons, but it was showing me in like Tallahassee and I had to go over to Southern California. And then I saw the beacons. I had to move over there. Um, and I could flip it around. I could turn off the APRS and just go to data. And then I would get the GPS, but then I wouldn't get the beacons. It was a really weird setup. So you'd almost have to, I mean, going back to um, the discussion we were talking about with the uh, DigiRig light, you, would, you could almost just use the DigiRig light then, hypothetically, because you'd use the Bluetooth to give you GPS. And then you use the audio connection over the radio uh, sorry, yeah, did I say that right? Bluetooth for GPRS, audio through the DigiRig to get you APRS, right? Is that kind of what you've been playing around with? Flip that. Flip because that. you don't you don't need the DigiRig. Plug okay. the USB cable up and uh -huh. get your GPS data over the over the USB. Okay. Then do uh the TNC to get your audio into your APRS application. I never thought of doing that. So you um <laughs> it does both. It doesn't have a problem with that? No, you just set you now. You have to set your interface outputs correct. But if you do that in sure. settings, you set uh, GPS to USB, and you set uh, the TNC or whichever the other one is to Bluetooth, and you can happily run both of them. Ooh, okay. I didn't even think about that, but that that solves a lot of problems because again, the 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 radio knows its location because it's literally got the GPS antenna. But when you connect it into a laptop, unless it's feeding that information in, it's not going to be able to to use it. And then the laptop's going to be like, I don't know where I am. I'm off grid. You know, I'm not connected to a phone or, you know, whatever. So that's interesting. I, I will have to try that. That that literally 
because that would have worked with the D74, which is when I encountered all of this, was when the D74, when I had that. I st oh, no, I sold that. Shane bought it. Uh, but yeah, okay, okay, very good. Uh, let, let's, I'm going to mention one thing, and then I think we'll, uh, we'll dive into doing a, a giveaway and maybe take some questions. So if you guys like to queue up your questions, go ahead. So there's something that's been on my radio. I don't know if this is or radio radar, uh, is the U console. Have you, have you followed this U console thing at all? I have not. So the, the U console, and I don't know why it's showing me, this is like the worst image for this thing. Uh, yeah, let's just go with the. I got the RP CM4 Lite. So this is a, it's almost like a cyber deck Linux device running Raspberry Pi. So fully integrated with a screen and a keyboard. Uh, it's got the standard IO of a Raspberry Pi, but it's running the CM4 version of Raspberry Pi. So I guess the, you know, the flat version is what I like to call it. Um, I ordered this in September of last year. Here. <laughs> and I still haven't got it. And I've been dying to make some videos on on this because it's like it's super cool. A lot of people are using it for like DOS emulation and they're playing like old school games and stuff like that. Uh, it comes into different formats or, or whatever. So uh, warning to everybody who's playing around with some of the like bleedier edge of some of this equipment that they're not shipping them that fast and when we got hit with a hit is the wrong word but when the inevitability of the downtime of chinese new year uh hit the the delays have been through the absolute roof um but it includes its own power it's got its own uh power connection you can get it with a i think you can get it with a uh you can get it with a, a cell phone connection data connection of some kind but i opted not to do that but so you, you're not familiar with this guy right or no, that. I'm not. I looked at it when you sent it today. Uh, when you sent me a link to it, I did go over and check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be interesting because if it's running a, a compute module four, you should theoretically be able to load most of the ham radio applications onto it. Yeah, and there's actually a uh, there's a YouTuber who has one that is an amateur radio operator. He has a 6100 Shegu 6100, and he's been producing some videos on it. Um, looks to be a, a real kind of cool. Again. Probably more down the ham radio world of, you know, simple communication type device. You're, you're not going to be typing out your dissertation on anything like this, uh, but but pretty cool. So well, you're definitely tinkering at this point. Uh, oh, absolutely. You're, you're definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely down the tinkering road. All right. So maybe we'll give away your antenna here. So what 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 would you like the keyword to be for this giveaway? Jason. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Obstacle course. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Don't don't start typing it yet. I'm gonna type this in here so it gets covered. All right. And nope. Okay. Go ahead. Start typing obstacle course in, guys. And there is a space there. I've added obstacle course. <clears throat> and you can win an KM4 ACK N Fed. And I have it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, bring it back up here. So somebody, I saw it before everybody started typing obstacle course. Uh, somebody asked about Meshtastic. I have not went down that rabbit hole yet. I'm kind of waiting to see where that space plays out. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back to that question here after when we get to some of the Q&A. Um, it's not, what's the best way to say this? I feel like after playing around with it considerably, that it's not really a ham radio thing. It's a it's a radio communications thing. That's neither good nor bad. I think it's great. It has very cool use cases. I'm planning on, my son doesn't know this, but um, he definitely wants me to do this. I'm planning on having him um, have one of these, particularly the ones that has the, the text capability, so actually a, a keyboard, that he could technically message me from his school and I'd be able to get the update on my phone thereby maliciously compliantly bypassing the school's requirement you can't have a cell phone so no it's not a cell phone this is a two-way messenger only for my dad right um which i think is has lots of values i think that's really great um with that said it feels like it's a system that's designed for a close-knit community like-minded people friend groups families that kind of thing to communicate with each other 
there are people you know when you when you spool up one of these the the standard channel that gets loaded on default and you can make your own channels but their standard channel is just the party line so if you set up a thousand of these covering miles and miles any other one that popped in they'd all be party lining together so you could just chat with randos but i don't think that's what its function is i think it's more for the build out your own private network build out your own system that would be able to utilize the capabilities there and again it's only text messaging they're they're adding uh sensor support so uh laura is internet of things and so if you had a let, let's say you what was the example they gave when they were on the chat uh let's say you had a perimeter sensor of some kind right so some kind of sensor that's blasting out ir and if something breaks the beam right it would it would throw mm -hmm. some kind of data um that would work that will work in this type of world. The problem is, is that Laura is very low data, extremely low data. That's why it can get out so far, even at 915 megahertz. So pretty cool. It's it's a pretty cool system, but it it definitely has uh, limitations. So man, we got a lot of people. Uh, people are still saying obstacle course. So <laughs> we may have to uh, wait a little bit here. It's it's blowing up with obstacle course, <laughs> obstacle course. So. Uh, what else is what else is hot on your radar? Things that you're well, it could be something you've been doing forever that you just love so much, but something new and interesting too. What 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 do you got? So real quick, if anybody is interested in the antenna, if they go to the website to the uh, link that you showed earlier, where um, the the product page is in the description, there's a way that you can sign up and get notified uh, when new stock comes in. Right. So I believe it's right there under the description, Josh. Yep. Right there, I'll drop the link yep. as well. Uh, great antenna. So, I, I did a build video on it. I, this is one of the videos that uh, I got so much flack for. They're like, why don't you just follow Jason's directions exactly? And I'm like, well, he had that little picture, so I followed the picture. And and, and I, I got so much flack. I'm like, guys, I didn't do it to offend anybody. I did it because it's like, it's that easy to build. It worked fine. I just did it yeah. a little bit differently, and it was okay. Everybody everybody survived. It it. It didn't kill my, my shoot my dog. Everything's fine. <laughs> but I got a lot of flack for that. I have literally I have literally built one of those at field day on a picnic table with a gas soldering iron. Yeah, so, buddy. I mean like a butane? Butane pretty gas. Pretty easy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I uh yeah. I'm you know, God, we should we should probably talk about that. Um are are you are you a, a portable soldering iron kind of guy? Do you, do you uh, only when soldering? I have to be. Okay. Do you have? Yeah. Do you have only a when I have to be. Do you have a preference, or, or is there a, a particular <sighs> type you're rocking right now? No. I, usually, I'm going to go with a butane. I do have one that's USB C uh, rechargeable, but every time I want to use that thing or carry it into the field, it's dead, and I, the Will, gas one's a little bit chat. easier for me. Thank you for the super chat, Will. Uh, I, have you seen the pine sill? Have you seen that? I don't think I have. So check this guy out. Okay, this is pretty cool. So is it it's it's USB, right? And so these are different heads. Okay. So it's it's USB C, right? And and I will sometimes, sometimes use it USB C, but it's got that DC connection. So if you throw your LiPo battery on this boy, it gets hot. Twelve volts. Twelve volts. Twelve volts. Yep. Yep. I, I, I right. use I use my BioNO. In fact, I, I I have this one here. I used this uh, with Shane when he was at my house, and we needed to solder up a, a coax connection for my truck. And I put the little blade connector on there for the PL239, threw the DC on the back, and this thing cooked. It was great. And yeah, uh, I have a link right. in the description. This is a 3D printed case I made, but uh, I have the link in the description for those that are interested. You can get that. You can get it on Amazon, but I, I think if you if you watch the Pine Sill uh, website, which they actually make tablets and other cool things that all run Linux, those guys uh, will sometimes do deals. So you can take my link, or you can, you know, go check out their website. Right on. Yeah, that's a that's a hot tip. I I, I really do like that one. And uh, the idea for the the portable soldering iron thing came from Adam Savage's channel. Do you ever watch his channel on Tested? Mm -hmm. And he yep, did a, a, a one day build where he built this like vertical trolley that runs that uses like uh, Milwaukee, not Milwaukee, DeWalt or whatever batteries that uses one of those USB connectors to, to run the soldering iron. 
And I was like, that's cool, but we can do better because we're hams. And that, that coaxial connection for power just removes any question of, of you getting that, uh, that power out, which is great. So, all right. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sometimes it's randomly $20, that soldering irons, randomly on their website, which is really, really cool. Wow. So, let's see. Um, I think we can run it now. Let's let's go ahead and roll for a winner here. Let me go back here. And here we go. Uh, Sean AI7EQ, you are the winner of the of the antenna. So here's what I want you to do, Sean. Um, if you're in the chat still, are you there? Hopefully you're there. If you're if you're capable of doing this, send me a message on Discord, and that way I can get your uh, address and I can forward that on to Jason and then we'll be all set to go. Yeah, there he is. He's in the chat. So Sean, shoot, shoot me a DM. <laughs> recount, recount. No, 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 we're not recounting. We're good. Hey, Josh, is he, Josh, is he good on QRZ? Uh, oh, his address. Oh, that's right. Cause he's got his call sign. Sean, are you good on QRZ? I'll wait for his, uh, yeah. Cause I just pulled him up on QRZ. If you are the same shot, well, hopefully nobody's, <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Oh no! Yes, he's good on cure. Oh, there you go. Then we cut out the middle band. Yep, AI seven EQ. I've got it. Excellent. So that's one of the the smart reasons to put your call sign in your uh, YouTube uh, channel because people know how to find you then, which is great. That's that's really helpful. Uh, let's see. Cu a couple of minutes. Well, we're actually a little bit over. Um, I don't want to cut into the after chat time. By the way, we're still Jason's going to join us on the after chat, so your questions are still going to be paramount there for Jason. Uh, we'll take a couple of questions, so if anybody wants to fire off a couple of them, and I'll I'll try and dive back in. Let's see. Um, question: Any ETA <laughs> on the CM108 Digi Rig light? I've been trying to hack around with normal CM108s and other sound cards to try and use my existing Digi Rig HT cables with no luck. So remember, we have a prototype, and we're definitely not. Uh, well, Jason might be, but I'm not uh, forefront on the developer scene for this. So, do you know this? The answer for this? No, I don't. And in fact, there is a minor bug in this that I reported to Dennis. So he's going to do a revision um, before the next uh, re before the next prototype or before the release or whatever. Excellent, excellent. Um, I, I realize now that all my questions have been murdered by the obstacle course. <laughs> <laughs> so if you didn't get your question answered, resend it. Oh, Sean's very excited. So that's excellent. It's a fun, it's a fun one to build. Um, uh, I, I would say once you get that thing locked in with the, with the capacitor kind of hanging around, you could throw heat shrink, shrink over that too. Right. And kind of lock it in. Do you do that occasionally? Do you use any heat shrink or anything like that? I put hot glue all over the back of mine. <laughs> Just to protect it. in hot glue. I like that too. <laughs> uh, oh, interesting question. Oh, this is also a, a good question for Jason. Question: Would anyone be interested in a serial modem that can be faster than Vara and maybe even Pactor? So yes, the answer is only, yes. only, only if it's cross compatible with all of the operating systems. Right now, are, are have you have you? seen any results of that baud rate change yet jason not yet not yet yeah i keep I... waiting for that to drop but i haven't seen it yet yeah uh is the is the moby link still king jason that depends on what you want to do it's an yeah. excellent device uh it but it's limited to being a tnc so you can't run vara fm with a MobyLink tnc it's packet. um but you can't run a boot right but you can't run a bluetooth connection with a digi rig so you kind of have to pick your poison and know what you want to do uh, oftentimes if you're doing aprs and traditional packet win link you're probably fine with a moby linked um there are some advantages to Vara FM. There's no question. Um, but I don't know. Have you felt that you're undergunned if you're using the Moby linked versus like a Vara solution? No, it's just you need to know what you're capable of with that device and what you're not capable of. Um, if it was a brand new ham just getting into digital modes, I would say go to the DigiRig. 
Uh, it's a more well-rounded device that's not going to limit more you. Things. Yeah. But if you want a blue, yeah, if you want a Bluetooth connection uh, with an HT that doesn't have a Bluetooth, you know, available TNC, you've got to go to the MobiLink. Yeah, I, I think that's actually very so wise. It really, words. just depends. Yeah, DigiRig is probably the way to go. I, I think from that point of view. So, uh, and yeah, Adrian, I think agrees with you. Uh, it is expensive, no question, but. Uh, I don't know. I, I I've I I bought one a long time ago and I've I've been using it for a while. Question from this ADHD life is Jason still using the mini PC or is the Evolve 3 better? Oh, uh, I'm assuming by mini PC he means the Woe that I, think so. uh, I bought I think last year and did some videos on. It's still a test platform here in the shack. Um again, I prefer the laptop just because I've got everything keyboard you know, screen all in one package. Uh, so I do still run the WoWi, but uh, more as a test platform here. I, I mean, the WoWi is pretty cool in the sense that it's like a PC that you could put in the shack and do PC things with it. If you can plumb the mm -hmm. lines, if you will, it's great. But you probably would never drag that out in the field, I'm guessing, unless it was like home-based in your Jeep or truck, right? Yeah, I mean, if you have an RV and wanted to put it in there, I've got a buddy that bought one and is running it in his adventure van. Uh, mm -hmm. Class B type van. Uh, so certain applications, it would be fine, but uh, I wouldn't want to be dragging a monitor and then the computer and, you know, then the keyboard, then the mouse and all of that with me uh, yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, here's an interesting one. Ham Till It Hurts asks, for the Digiblog, which I think that's what he's calling your, your little uh, messages you're putting out, uh, oh. have you considered a BBS? Yes. We did consider that. Um, we just went with FL Dig instead. You could just as easily do it with a BBS. I do. Um, have you ever played around with traditional packet, like old school packet? Uh, in in a BBS format, like chat rooms and things of that nature. Like a like a like a ham radio BBS, where you have an actual box, like a a, T, a full TNC box that has memory for for storing other people's messages, that kind of thing. So I built one on a Raspberry Pi. Does that count? Yeah, I think so. I mean, does it does it remember <laughs> the call signs? Like if they come back yeah. a day later and pick up their messages? Yeah. Yeah, it did. So uh, there. No, go ahead. Sorry, I'm trying to remember. There the was just. The I used. It, it was a uh, Cantronics probably. Cantronics. Yep. Um, there wasn't enough interest in my area when I built the when I built the BBS. So. Yeah, and, and this is also one of those areas where I think where you live plays a huge factor. Down here in Southern California, there's a number of BBS repeaters that are still up and running. And well, repeaters and BBS probably shouldn't be using the same uh, term because it's not really repeating. But yes, they, they exist. Catalina Island still has a fully functioning, really useful BBS that we that we will sometimes pipe into. So BBS is bulletin board system. For anybody that's curious, it goes all the way back to the, the early 90s. I think it even predates the 90s into the 80s. But it's basically like a, a mailbox that is in somebody else's radio shack that you can log into and you can get your messages live using like a terminal application. You could do PuTTY if you wanted to. But one of the cool things about the BBS system is these TNCs, they can actually bridge the, the connections through multiple hops of TNCs, which was just unthinkable technologies back in the 90s. So you could go up and down the, the California coast almost if you wanted to with a, with a robust enough network that you could be able <coughs> to be able to get messages, send messages, reply to people, etc. It was super cool. Super, super cool. But that is, that's now ham radio uh, vintage stuff at that point. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I don't know what just happened. I breathed a feather or something like that <clears throat> all right well we're i think we're going to wrap up here guys uh we're going to have jason join us on the hammer Radio crash course discord so if you don't know what that is the link is in the description go ahead and join make an account whatever and scroll down to hashtag live dash stream that's the texty chat which is fine you can just hang out there um also, we have a voice chat. It's two down from that. Hashtag live dash stream forward slash after chat. Do set up your microphone and your speaker, and we will take live calls from people. We're going to 
take it most advantages of Jason's time that we have in these kind of questions. So join us over there. And uh, yeah, Jason, thank you so much for being on the uh, live stream. As always, it's good to talk to you, man. I wish we had more times like this where we could just talk shop, <laughs> talk ham radio. <laughs> no, I appreciate you having me. It's always fun to be on here, Josh. Thank you. Very good. All right. I'm going to leave uh, Jason hang out a little bit. Jason, we'll talk on Zoom after we break here. Uh, but for okay. everybody else, thank you so much. Appreciate you. And yeah, this is the, exactly the, these discussions, all this stuff. This is what we try and do on the Discord. So join us over there and go to Ham Help Among Ham. Ham Radio is also a chat room we have where people can just have these kind of questions, right? That's a, a big thing here, particularly if you start dipping into Linux. Linux can have a lot of questions. And, and please, please, again, it would really be appreciated if you take the link in the video description or if you're live with me right now, go sub to Jason's channel. He deserves all those views and uh, you taking a look at what he's doing because this is going to open up, if you've never seen any of his videos before, this will open up new avenues of interest in amateur radio. And it's super cool. And his, his consideration and methodologies and how he works up these systems and the software that he makes is super awesome. So... He does deserve it. Go sub. Uh, oh no, Leia's cough. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have Leia's cough. I don't have that. She's been sick since 2023. Is the joke around the house because she's had some amount of cold. She needs to go to a doctor. I think she's. I think she's got the black lung pop. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and play the patron role here. Thank you so much to the patrons who allow me to do a lot of what I do. I'm going to have a big video shoot day, hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully Leia doesn't have plans for me, which is usually what happens on a Sunday. I think I can break free, though, after a little bit of time. I have so many, I have so many videos that need to be edited and so many show ideas that I haven't done videos for. So I really just need like a day to kind of square it all out to plan my next week. Because, man, my, my life has been absolutely crazy uh, these last couple of weeks with everything going on on the on the personal level. Because I, I do have a job. I do work. I'm an engineer. Uh, so it's it's been tough for me to get all the things done that I need to get done. But I thank you guys. Appreciate all the support that you guys do. Because if it wasn't for that, it would make things incredibly more difficult. And really good feedback on the on the comments today. So many people engaged in the in the chat and, and good questions. I know that there are. Uh, this is a little bit more down the niche road of amateur radio, but I think that for almost all of you, if you're watching me right now and you're watching Jason earlier, then you're like just like just right there. And it, it's not that difficult to get yourself like a Jankopotamus, get yourself a digi rig set up, and you could be doing a lot of this stuff even locally with your ham clubs, and a lot of fun can be had and really grow your kind of skill set and your capabilities within amateur radio. So make sure you sub to Jason because he's going to be talking about the obstacle course and the things that he's running with his club. I think it's a great idea. We should grow that into something like a franchise almost that he's got a little syllabus for because I just spoiler alert, I bet you he's going to write all this down and it's going to be like a document that you could you could review if you needed to and uh, that would be really useful. So thank you to the patrons. Thank you to everybody watching. We really do appreciate you. And we'll be talking to you here shortly on the After Chat. So 73. Thank you, Bill. I agree. All right.